Hi everyone, it's Tony Tom Logan back with another video for you and today we're going to be taking a look at the Corsair 220T. It's a full ATX compact design case, tempered glass side, funky design on the front and even more funky if you're into home design and that sort of thing is the inclusion of grey now rather than just a black and white. For £100, is this the case for you? Now, we always start at the front and the top. So I've turned the case on its front so that we can see the whole thing a lot more easier without uh, dodgy camera angles and having to put things on the floor. And you've got your power button down on the very front of the case, a couple of USB 3.1s, a combined headphone and microphone jack, and then a reset switch. And you can see the first glance, at least for us, in the main section of the video of the grey and this is a dust filter should you not be using rear fans or you want to clean lines up a little bit and it is that nice grey colour. Now when we remove it you can see there's a couple of sets of fan mounts in there. You have an offset 120mm set and you can put 220mm fans in the roof and then you have a normal set of 140mm uh, fans and you can move them up and down a little bit but the 120mm being offset is quite important when we start talking about AIOs on the inside because you do need it to move away from the motherboard. On the front you do have this kind of funky design going on and this is a steel front but it does pop off there we go. So it does pop off, but it's machined for extra airflow. It's a single piece of folded steel that's been powder coated white. You then have a grey surround around the outside. Now, the, you get about 20 millimetres of room down the side here for airflow to get in there, but you obviously do get airflow going in from the front as well. Now, you can see that there is also, and I really like this, although it feels like the kind of Australian really hot market like fly protector thing, but it is a very fine uh, mesh. But behind that mesh, what you can see is you've got three 120 millimeter fans. They are the new uh, SP120 RGB Pro fans, and you get all three of those with the case. If you were to buy a triple pack of these, admittedly, then you do get a Commander Pro and stuff with the fans, but those fans on their own cost $49.99. So when you consider the fact the whole case is $99.99, things do start to add up and sound a little bit better value considering it is such a small case. Um, so really easy to put that on. It's nice that the surround is black as well. It all does just kind of fit in nice. There we go. He says fit in nice and he can't fit it in nice because he's too busy looking at the camera. Um, the one thing I would say though, from here, now I know they have to keep costs down, so that's why we have a steel front, but I would genuinely say, if there was an option to be able to upgrade, to remove this and then have some kind of um, a glass front to it, yeah I know it may affect temperatures a little bit, but even if you had to have a metal uh, piece around the outside and then a piece of tempered glass, I actually think that's quite a pretty looking case to the point when it even makes me want to make like an acrylic front or get a piece of uh, tempered glass made. Maybe they could do like, I don't know, like a 20, uh, 220 Pro or something like that with a glass front because I actually really like it. Now, when we come around the back, it's just a standard layout. You get seven expansion slots, you've got a 120 millimeter fan where you can move the fan up and down a little bit depending on what your airflow configuration is going on. And then you do get a basic, just a power supply, dust filter in the bottom. Uh, when we are talking in the bottom, although it's quite, there we go. Uh, uh, when we are talking about the bottom, the case feet are actually gray as well. When we uh, pop the rear of the case, there's a couple of thumb screws to get it off. It's a normal kind of um, you know, layout for one of these. You can see a nest of extra fans because we have two fans fitted in the roof and an extra one in the back. They do not come with 
the case. You only get the three in the front, and I'll cover that a little bit more in the conclusion. Around the back though, you get a couple of uh, SSD mounts. There are cable tie mounts to be able to latch the cables down everywhere, but we've got it all open because we fitted the other fans in really quickly. You do get a hub as well. Now this hub controls your RGB. So it's like a Commander Pro going on in there. So you can attach those in there to uh, take care of the cables. And then we've also got some, uh, we've had to put some uh, PWM splitters so that we could power all six of the fans. You get three nice cable grommets down the side. Now in the bottom of the case, there is a spot there for two mechanical hard drives and there's a cage there. Uh, now this is a normal 160 millimeter length power supply. It's actually the RMX 550. And what we did have to do during assembly was remove the hard drive cage, fit the power supply and the cables, then refit the mechanical hard drive cage uh, and then we also use the hard drive cage to put some of the cables and stuff in. And it's, but, but you do need to remember that it is a compact case. So you can't make things smaller without making some things a little bit more difficult. So I don't particularly see that as being a negative part of the case. I just thought I'd give you guys uh, the heads up. So when it does come to assembly, if you purchase one, you can just whip it out quick. It literally adds a couple of minutes to the assembly time. It's really not the end of the world. Nice big cutout for the CPU going on. There are lots of uh, cable grommet routing holes towards the roof of the case. It makes getting things through nice and easy. It's also a good job that the, the case hasn't got a, a tempered glass rear. Because of the short space, it can make getting things looking tidy that little bit more difficult. Uh, it's only gonna be like, uh, most of you aren't gonna care about what's going on around the back of the case. Uh, anyway, the uh, the two 2.5 inch hard drive mounts that are there, there aren't any anywhere else around on the other side. It's all actually kind of clean and stuff around there. So if you've spent a lot of money on one terabyte, two terabyte, maybe even four terabyte hard drives, then the only thing I can say, and it is an idea, it's one of those little mod ideas, is maybe measure up where it is and then you could still uh, cut yourself a hole in the back, put some uh, C-strip around the outside of it, and then uh, mount uh, some acrylic there and you would still have enough room to be able to get it all in and on and still be able to display your um, solid state drives. Be even easier though, just to get a bit of acrylic around the back with some magnetic tape and then bosh, you've made yourself a clear panel for the rear. But that's going to be for the modders amongst. So we zoomed in quite a bit on the uh, temper glass panel. You can see that you've got the thumb screw there, but the thing that I've zoomed in on is the fact that the thumb screw is not only silver, but the rubber grommet that is behind it, acting as like a damper, is grey as well, rather than just black. And I like that level of attention to detail. After you've removed your four thumb screws, it's actually kind of nice to have a non-tinted window. Now I know the case is white, but far too often we end up hiding the components that are inside the case by an excessively tinted window. Um, the components inside, you're going to be wondering why it's not a Ryzen 3000 or why we've not got an AIO in there, but this is literally just a static set of test equipment that we use for doing thermal tests. So uh, when we get to the um, uh, graphs later on, that is a 980. We do have a 9700K in there, and it, but like I said, it, and that's a Hyper 212 cooler, but it's just so that we can give you some uh, thermal numbers and they are used across the board as well. Now I did say earlier when we were looking at the roof that the uh, offset fans were a very important thing. And that is because the 140s, you can literally just only fit the 140s in the roof. You cannot fit a 140 millimeter based AIO in the roof. But with the 120 millimeter fans, if you're using memory like we are, something like the Corsair LPX kind of height, so nothing with excessive heat sinks, you can run a 120 millimeter based fan AIO in the roof. Because of those offsets, it spaces it away from the motherboard enough that you can get it in there. So if you were running the H100i, for example, you could fit that and be able to run it in the case memory dependent. Some uh, heat sinks for VRMs might be a little bit big, but they'd literally need to be excessively big over the size of the uh, rear IO, for example, to even become an issue. 
but don't forget it's a compact case and we have already said that you can fit a 360 millimeter AIO in the front. Now with the 360 millimeter AIO in the front, it can just fit in there. So it will fit the Corsair H150i, for example. Does need to be uh, a 120 millimeter base 360. Obviously 360 is divisible by 120, but you get the point that I'm trying to make. So you can get that in there. The one thing I will say though, is if you do need to use a 360 millimeter AIO, you can see that the uh, hard drive cage that we spoke about earlier is going to cause you some problems. You are going to need to remove that completely. So if you are going to use a 360 mil AIO, then you cannot have a mechanical hard drive fitted in that cage. The cage needs to be removed completely. And that's gonna be something that you're gonna to need to consider. Although with SSD prices and M.2 prices starting to fall, it may not be a little bit uh, uh, so much of a problem as it may have been a few years ago. The one thing I don't particularly agree with though is the fact that if you don't use a 360mm AIO then the cutout is always visible and it's something I pick up with all brands and all manufacturers about it because it's just something that makes my OCD twinge really badly. It does need a cover plate and they've done such a good job on that cover plate. It does seem quite minimalist there's nothing shouting out about it they've not got a 2.5 mil kind of mount there uh, sorry 2.5 inch mount there or anything yes it's got some vents in it but they've been done quite well it's just a shame that if you removed uh, that you didn't have a cover there and to be honest with you as you'll see with the thermals in a little bit I'm going to be telling the bulk of you that if you do buy this case and you don't add any extra fans to take this bottom one out and fit it in the back anyway and if you did do that you'd want a nice cover there and it's just a shame Corsair didn't see it as a big enough priority to get it done and that's one of the things that really gripes with me that they've gone to so much effort with things like grey grommets, nice clear windows and then they don't bother with a, a really simple cover there and especially when you know the bulk of people aren't going to be using a H150i I think that should have been a cover that should have been part of the design process. Talking of AIOs if you have an AIO fitted in the front and you've got 280 millimeters of room for GPUs if you don't have, then you've got 310 mil. If you go for the 280 mil route, then obviously that's gonna mean that you've got 30 mil of room for radiators such as a H150i or maybe even an aftermarket water cooling rad like uh, what Corsair are actually selling now as well. So you can get rads in the front at the detriment of your GPU length. Although the GPUs aren't getting excessively long anymore. They're not getting longer and longer and longer to try and get them uh, to be cooled. They've actually started getting fatter. And because of that fatness, where we have been getting uh, much wider GPUs, you'll see down the back that there's quite a bit of extra space down the side of it. So they've not compacted it in the width ways and you get an extra 60 millimeters of room there. And I don't know of a GPU that's gonna come any close to the window there. If you did want to go vertical GPU as well, you can see that there are no mounts down that side, but you can obviously buy aftermarket brackets, which will go in here, and you still get 60 mil of breathing room before you get to the window as well. So if you did want to go down that route and make yourself something quite, uh, uh, you know like kind of cool and but still being compact it can swallow all of it okay so then on to the conclusion and some testing as well because we are doing i said to you we've got specific kit in there now that's because we are doing specific sets of tests so just to run through those for those of you that may have just only watched this video that is and i know this side of my face is a little dark but it's because we've um We've been playing around with stuff in the background and if you like that and you're a regular then please comment underneath and we can have a chat about it or come and mention it on the OC3D forums. Um, I know a lot of people would have gone nano leaf and they are not lit, it's backlights down at the bottom that are catching uh, different shaped angles on the wall. Anyway, so uh, the specifics. Cooler Master 212 cooler. We also manually set the volts on the CPU. It's left at stock where it's 4.8. We fix it at 4.8 and we manually set the volts to 4.2. 
The CPU cooler is uh, wired into the power supply for a 12 volt feed, but it has a nine volt power, uh, sorry, a nine volt fan speed reducer on it. So it's a very fixed speed. The GPU is also fixed to 60% fans. And that is so that when we run the case tests, the only variables are going to be the cases themselves. And we do do a 600 RPM test, we do a 1000 RPM test, and then we do a max speed test. Now 600 and 1000 RPM uh, fan speeds for the cases is very comparable because they're gonna be at the same speeds. But some of the cases out there, when you go to full speed, they won't all be running the same kind of speed. So some might be 1200 RPM, some might be 2000 RPM. That's something you're gonna to wanna to pick up on in the graphs and we do get to it. Now, we do sort the graphs in both. Da -da -da -da! CPU, but then we also flip things with a completely separate graph and it's all the same data, but then we also do a GPU uh, sorted. And that's so that you can see the difference between the airflow and the case. And sometimes the GPUs do seem to respond better to some cases than others, but it's 600 RPM. One of the things I will say for the new SP120 uh, RGB Pros is at 600 RPM, they're not very good. They're just not moving enough air. And it was when we originally did it, what we did is we just tested the case as it first arrived with three fans in the front, and it just wasn't that great. And that's why you'll see there's another 220 with uh, six fans on it, and that's when we went and added another three of the exact same fans in the roof. Well, in the roof and one in the back. But what I would say is, uh, from my experience with the case straight from the get-go, before we even get into the thick of the results, and that's if you, unless you actually like the triple fan look, what I would personally do is take the fan out from the bottom. I would fit it in the back. I'd also take those two other fans and move them down a little bit so it looks a little bit more balanced. And I'd run the case that way if you don't want to spend any more money on it. As I've already said as well, three of those fans costs 50 pounds. So when you get three with a case, it sounds great, but then you know you might be thinking, well, do I need to buy three more to go everywhere else? I'd kind of say no, because if you're gonna fit an AIO in the case, for example, you're gonna have some fans with that anyway. It's all gonna depend on your OCD, depending on whether you want everything to very, very much match. I'd also say, so you've seen the results for the 600 RPM, it wasn't that great. Um, I'd also say that adding the, uh, the three fans in weirdly for GPU temps on this didn't seem to do uh, that much. CPU temps benefited, but GPU didn't. In some instances, there, it was either pretty much the same or sometimes it went up a little bit. And I don't know whether this is because there's some weird airflow thing going on in there then I don't particularly uh, know. So it wasn't uh, the worst at times, but at the same time, it wasn't, considering that the worst ones are the Kudamasa Silencio 600 and then Corsair's own 678C, and they're both little ovens, for it to only be kind of, um, uh, you know, kind of just beating those, I don't particularly see that as being much of a win. Then when you move on to like the max RPM speed, um, again, it was, it was all right, but it wasn't particularly like amazing. When you consider that the 220T was at 1450 RPM, uh, and there's not a great deal of difference between that and the Fractal R6, which was only at 1000 RPM, you kind of get my uh, thoughts on it, or you can see where I'm coming from. Um, so people like do need to buy extra fans for it. Like I said, with the um, AIOs and that sort of thing, no, I don't think you're going to need to. I do think it needed slightly better fans than this. But I do need to say something in a little bit of balance though, especially with 600 RPM. When we do our CPU tests, it's with OCCT. It's an absolute CPU torture test. And you're not going to be doing that kind of load on your system at 600 RPM, unless you're building an utterly, utterly silent rig, or at least trying to, and then you're going to be a little bit more balanced about your expectations anyway. So if you had this uh, wired up so that you had a fan curve on your rig, then you won't run into any of those fixed RPM fan issues that I said about. That is something to consider when you do think about the rest. 
Um, I do think that the uh, low RPMs, these fans, are still a little bit too lacking though, which was kind of surprising when you consider how compact it is. You think that the what air was getting there would have been getting there quite easily, which it just hasn't. And considering they're meant to be static pressure, it does make you think that maybe they actually needed airflow fans in there instead. So uh, the fan choice, lovely lighting, not so great cooling. I would put it very much in the kind of average stroke mediocre sense and I think they've gone very much for the uh, colour options rather than them actually being performance based. Beyond that though, it's actually a really nice case. It's really nice to build in. It's a shame that they didn't have that front on it because it's the one bit about the aesthetics that I didn't actually didn't like. And I, I mean that and I, I do not like the fact that that cover's missing. It should have been there in this day and age. And Corsair are meant to be the manufacturer that prides itself on trying to lead the pack. And they seem to have lost their way in that uh, way recently. And it's finer details like that that I used to say that Corsair were all about. And they're now kind of slipping down the hierarchy in my point of view in that those things need to be there. I don't care whether they cost another couple of dollars, sort it out because the bulk of people aren't gonna be running a H150i in the front. And yes, I know that it's gonna mess up like the fan side of it. So maybe have it so it's cut around that front fan or something. It just needed that little bit to tidy it up. It's like the icing on the cake. If you go and buy a cupcake, having that little icing or maybe even a cherry on the top, that's the sort of thing that I expect to come when you've paid the Corsair premium. But then you do say premium, Tom, and it leads me nicely on to the competition in reality is more than likely going to be based on the Fractal Define C. It's pretty much the same size. It's got a tempered glass window, same kind of idea with an offset fan set on the roof. But the only difference is this front bit. In that, on the Fractal, it's just plastic. It looks like a Fractal uh, R6, for example, but no door. It's just a plastic bit with vents down the side. So the Corsair one has some cutouts. But the reason why it's got the cutouts is it does come with those RGB fans. And the Fractal ones are just plain and unlit. And the Fractal is only £10 cheaper. So you pay £10 more, you get all of the RGB lights, uh, and to be honest with you, I actually really like the fact that it does come in a white and grey. It's kind of a nice, funky, modern feel to it as well. So if you were paying £10 for th th the addition of RGB fans, then brilliant. Now, I know there are going to be people out there that are going to be screaming at the screen saying that you don't want RGB. Now, that's fine, but you do need to remember they don't need to be doing unicorn puke. You can set them to white. You can set them to a very fixed colour if you want. You don't have to have them like this and you can easily turn it off as well by not even connecting the RGB uh, lighting headers. So that £10 enabler, I'd rather have saved that. And to be honest with you, if that's fine, then you can, you know, go and save your £10, go and buy the Fractal. That's absolutely fine. You know, it, you, you don't need to make a big song and dance about it. These things are there to give people options at home. It's just as easy to turn them off. Or if you're really clever about it and you don't whinge about it, you can take them out. You could sell them to your friend and you could put the fans that you would prefer in there. Because I know that if you'd bought the Fractal, you'd probably have pulled fans out and changed them anyway because you would have been moaning about them at some point. So, maybe I should edit that out. I don't know. See the funny side of it, people. Um, so it's a great little compact case. Probably they should have had something like this out there a little bit later couple of fine points that I'd like to change. One of the most things that I'd like to do with it, if I'm honest, is like I've said, I would love to see an option for a glass front. So maybe they can do that later with maybe a glass front and then maybe some ML fans in it or some slightly better airflow fans in it, for example. But for the bulk of it, I really like it. It's a smart little case. It fits in with the kind of uh, gray and white theme. This is a gray desk, by the way. Also fits in with the hexagons and stuff as well. So if you're going for that modern, compact look and you don't want a huge case on your desk, it's actually not bad for a hundred quid.